Hello, Calvary Junior Youth. I hope you are all doing well today. My name is Wyatt, if you don't know me. I'm the Student Ministries Director here at Calvary, and I'm so happy that you've decided to join us online today. Um, if you haven't been with us for the past few weeks, um, that is all good because we are starting a new series today. So you're coming for a perfect time. Good, good timing. Uh, we just left a series where we we're talking about justice and God's justice and how he's just to everyone. It is a perfect justice. Everyone is treated fairly and every single person is loved. And it is a beautiful, beautiful message that we are called to take on. We're called to love every single person. So if you want to hear some of those, go back to earlier weeks. Um, all of the thumbnails will say justice. Any of those are on that series. But now we are moving into a new series on God's family. Um, so if you've been around the church for a little bit, you've probably heard this term before, that we are a part of God's family. And you're probably like, what does that mean? Like, that's a, I know that term exists, but it's kind of weird. Uh, if you aren't a part of the church, if you're kind of new to the church, then this is maybe an even weirder term, that you are part of God's family. And yes, it's talking about us. Anyone who is a believer of God or follows Jesus, we are now a part of God's family, which is incredible that he's allowing us into his family. Sometimes when I think of God's family, I just think of this like, really cheery, like giddy kind of moment. If you've ever seen The Sound of Music, uh, there's this one scene, you probably haven't, it's super old, but there's this one scene where they're all running through a meadow and it's like, la, 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 sound of music. Uh, that's not how the song goes really, I'm not gonna sing it, but they're all running and they're like, yay, part of the family. And it's so happy. And yeah, for some parts, that's what the family of God looks like, but is that really all there is or is there more? to it. So now we're going to be looking at what does it mean to be a part of God's family. So if you have your Bibles, please flip to Ephesians chapter 4. That's going to be our base text for the month. We're going to be looking at this text throughout the whole month and looking at some stories that kind of show the examples that this passage talks about. So Ephesians, it's this letter that Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, and he's writing to the church uh, about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And he says this to you, the, to them, I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in all there's a lot going on in that passage but really what is paul saying he's saying that as the church as followers of god and believers in christ we are one body in christ there is a unity among us and that's because we follow one god we all have one spirit and follow one truth that being jesus christ we are unified. Think about your families, right? For example, my family, we have a bunch of different members of the family. We have my siblings, uh, Mitch and Delaney, and then my parents, Atticus and Renee, and we are all individual members. We all live our own lives, but we are still all the Haravels. We form one family unit, being the Haravels, and that is how the church functions. It's a bunch of different members, unique members, but they form one body of Christ, one family, one church. That's what it means to be a part of God's family. All right, so if you have your Bibles, we are going to be looking at a story which is a really significant moment for the church. So it's in Acts chapter two, and it's the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know what the Holy Spirit is, it is God's spirit that is in us and resides in believers and followers of Christ and it serves as a helper, a guide to our life. It helps us when we read, it helps us when we pray, um, and it helps us in life. It helps us to think more like the Father, it helps us to act more like the Father. Um, and it is an incredible gift that God gives every single one of his believers and every single one of his followers. So again, if you have your Bibles, please flip to Ephesians chapter two, verse one, and it says this, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. So Pentecost, it's this really, really important Jewish holiday. It's all about the Passover, which was this a moment a long, long time ago in history, like thousands upon thousands of years ago, where Israel was freed from slavery. God did this incredible act to save the Israelites, save everyone who followed him and listened to his instructions. 
So they're celebrating this as Jewish people. They're celebrating the Pentecost. And it says when they were all together. It's talking about the day it's talking about. It's all the Christians, all the people that followed Jesus. Jesus had just ascended back into heaven after being alive on earth. He ascends back into heaven. And all these Christians are together. They're worshiping God. And they meet together. They eat together. They pray together. They're doing all these meetings just like church. Um, but they're doing it daily. And here they are gathering together on Pentecost. And then verse 2, this is what it says. And it says, And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So they're speaking in all of these different languages all of a sudden. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. There's these tongues of fire that descended on them. It's this crazy moment of God's power. And they're all speaking in different tongues. And it's not to show how powerful they were or how cool they are that now they can just speak in other languages. No, that's not at all what's going on. Later in the scripture, all these people are like, how are they speaking in these languages? And these people say, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. So what's going on? They're all speaking, but they're worshiping God. They finally get this chance to tell all these people that they previously couldn't communicate with. And they can effectively tell them about the gospel. That is what it was all about to get the spirit, is now they can worship God and bring glory to God in a new way. That's what it was all about, bringing glory to God. So some people are amazed by this, but then others are like, I don't think this is real. And they actually call them out and say, you must be drunk. If you're speaking like this, you must be drunk. But one apostle, Peter, he stands up for them. He gives us this incredible sermon defending them. And I encourage you to read it. It's Acts chapter 2, 14 to 36. We're not going to go through it right now, but all you need to know is he says this, this sermon where he's talking about this is the Holy Spirit and this is the gospel. This is why we are doing this. Why are we able to do this? And this is what happens immediately after he speaks. He says, now when they heard this, all of the skeptics heard this. They were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he talks to them, and, he, and he's telling them to repent, and it says that day 3,000 people became followers of Christ. 3,000 people became followers of Christ because of the Spirit. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. And these people who became followers of Christ, they then met together and they began doing life together. Daily in fellowship, they were together, um, eating together, praying together, reading together. And this is what it means to be a part of God's family. We can be a part of God's family because we are one in the Spirit. We follow one God, one truth, and we have one Spirit that resides in us. Let me pray for us. Dear God, I thank you for the ability to be in relationship with you. I thank you for your family, that we can follow you, God. There's this incredible, incredible moment that we can have a relationship with you just because of your love, that you are such a good, good God and you love us so much. God, I thank you for your love and your peace and your grace. We love you so much in your name. Amen. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for joining me online today. A couple things that I want to remind you of before you leave today. So first thing, we do in-person services here at Calvary Church at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. every single Sunday. So in-person junior youth services. So you don't have to go to the big person, boring adult church. You can come hang out with me where we play games, eat snacks. We hear this message, but it's a lot more fun. It's like discussions, there's skits. Um, you can talk to me as I'm speaking. Uh, it's a little bit more engaging than just listening to me on a video, I promise. So I'd love to see you there. I would love to meet you. If you are in grade 6 to 8, please come out 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. here at Calvary. The other exciting thing we have going on here are Friday night youth services. So for anyone in grade 6 to 12, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., we meet here every single Friday night at Calvary Church. And we play games, we eat snacks, we hear a sermon. Soon there's going to be worship, which will be so sweet. Uh, but we just have a ton of fun. And again, I'd love to see you. We have a whole leadership team that would love to meet you. That would just...
be so stoked to see you out there. Um, last week we did an escape room. So just an example of some of the things that we do. We do escape rooms every now and then where uh, the leadership team at youth, we make this escape room so that you and your friends can do it for no money at all, completely free. And you can uh, have a snack afterwards, but you can do this super awesome, fun escape room. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me online today. I hope that I will see you in person soon or meet you if I've never met you before. Okay, have a great week.